بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على محمد بن عبد الله العلي وصحبه وسلم Hello, how are you? Hi everybody This is our first lecture in literature review We talked about the first one about why do we conduct literature review We found three main reasons for conducting literature review Find out knowledge gap to have a reason for conducting your new PhD Second thing is Defining concepts used in your research question, research aim, research objectives, and any findings you have discovered new concepts, you have to consider and define it in literature review. The third part is theoretical framework. Theoretical framework is mainly for positive research. By the way, sometimes when we define a concept in interpretive research, we call it conceptual framework, which is different from theoretical framework I know many people mix between them but I, I love to separate conceptual framework mainly in interpretive research it means you define the concepts that you will use in your research theoretical framework in positive research is a set of hypotheses to be tested later so once you test this hypothesis you call it model so a theoretical framework before testing after testing, after collecting data, we call it a model. Let's give an example. We say, for example, x affects y and y affects z. I have hypothesis 1, hypothesis 2. x affects y and y affects z. Okay? So I need to develop this hypothesis. How can I develop this hypothesis? As I said in the first lecture, in positive research, we claim that science is based on two things, rationalism plus empiricism. Rationalism is deducting this relationship from literature review. I extrapolate this relationship from literature review. I deduce this relationship from literature review. So I build this relationship based on literature review. Why I say that? If I try to find the relationship between Obama's speech yesterday and earthquake in Japan, I will find a relationship. Statistically, I will find a relationship. Statistically speaking, you can find a relationship between anything in the world. Does it make a sense? No. So before you formulate a hypothesis and say X affects Y, you need to have a rational for this hypothesis. That's why we call it rationalism and empiricism. Rationalism is you have a theory, you have an idea, you have a perspective. Why do you say this affects this? You have a rational for that. After that, you need to examine, to test it using empirical data, using questionnaire, using statistics, finding relationship between different elements, as I explained in the first lecture in research methodology. So I need to to, to formulate this hypothesis. How can I formulate this hypothesis from literature review? There are two main ways. Traditional one, non-innovative one, idiot one, <laughs> and the smart one, okay, creative one. Let's talk about the traditional one. The traditional one says that you need to say X affects Y, okay? Please find to me, 10 papers say X affects Y. So, Ahmed says X affects Y. And how? Muhammad say X affects Y. Uh, Jose, X affects Y. John, X affects Y. Since all of these people believe that X affects Y, I claim that X affects Y. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> what is the contribution to knowledge here? Nothing. It's ridiculous to do that. But it's, it's very common in some places. However, you need to take into consideration something. These people claim that there is a contribution to knowledge. How come? Ah, oh, this happened in France. This happened in Germany. This happened in Italy. This happened in Switzerland. I don't know if it's happened in the UK or not. So, no one knows if it's happening in the UK or not, so there is a knowledge gap. Yes, 
you can do that, but it's not interesting. It's not interesting research. Some people argue something else. You say, yes, X affects Y. We found a lot of paper. Okay, say X affects Y. And in the UK, and I found a lot of paper say Y affects Z. In the UK. But no one says X affects Y and Y affects Z. So this is my contribution to knowledge. So you have a lot of papers say X affects Y in the UK. Other lots of papers say Y affects Z in the UK. But no one tests a relationship between X, Y, and Z. And this is my contribution to knowledge. I can't disagree with you. However, it seems silly to do that. Okay. Yes, some people need to do that just to promote in their career, but I don't think it's a valuable idea. So, I don't love this approach. So, how can I innovate in building my hypothesis? How can I develop my hypothesis? Okay, there are different ways. Okay, of course, it needs a series of lectures. By the way, there is a very nice book about how you formulate your hypothesis. I uploaded in the Facebook. Of course, I don't upload the book itself. I think I upload the name of the book and the abstract of the book. This book is very, very useful. I think this book is used in MIT in the United States of America. And I think it's used in Harvard. I think so. So I advise you to read it. If you buy it from Amazon, if you buy it from an old copy, it costs less than one pound. It's not expensive. I think if you can buy the old one, very cheap, don't buy the new one, it's the same. Okay? So I just here I to pick some ideas how to innovate in uh, developing your hypothesis. Let's take some examples in innovative ways of creating or developing your hypothesis. I believe that X affects L. And L looks like Z. Based on this assumption, not hypothesis, so assumption is different from hypothesis. Assumption, it means that if this thing as I believe, this could affect this. So assumption something hold the constant, could be right or could be wrong, but the hypothesis something to be tested. So there is assumption, I think that L affects Z. Wow, that's great. So if I test the relationship between X and Z and I found X affects Z, that means that my assumption is right. So I can formulate hypothesis X affects Z. Based on what? Based on claiming that X affects L and L looks like Z. So X could affect Z. This is very nice contribution to knowledge because here you, you claim two things. The first thing, X affects Z and you are the first one in the world that says that others, idiots, will use this and imitate you in other disciplines or in other uh, contexts. At the same time, this assumption is implicitly right. So later you can make another research about Z and Z. I can give you an example X happiness affect or peace life, peace life affect happiness and happiness affects depression. So I think I hypothesize that peace lead to less depressed people. So we can test it. You know how this is how I can think. There are different way of critical writing. I will talk about it in the next lecture. How to critical, how to criticize knowledge and to get new knowledge by criticizing the traditional one. I'll talk about it in the next lecture, please, Linda. Okay. So this is a way of of developing your theoretical. So use words like likewise. Okay. The same thing. You try to find a situation and a compare situation. Contrasting ideas, comparing ideas, okay? Uh, take the same logic. Think about the same logic. I'll give you a stupid example, but could be helpful to you to understand. I love to drink water, okay? This is a fact. 
water and juice are very similar in their nature that's why I propose that I will love juice purpose and hypothesis are very close to each other proposition between concepts hypothesis between variables however I propose that I love juice so let's try test drink juice I don't love juice so I reject my proposition this is very important to understand I took similarity in the concepts or difference I love water water is different from food that's why I will not love food this is my proposition this is my hypothesis I will not love food I eat the food yes I dislike the food that means that this hypothesis is wrong okay so you need to understand that you need to think about similarity and differences so look at the concept and find the similar concept for example critical success factors in total quality management implementation since look how I speak critically since total quality management is a quality system and six sigma is a quality system and another argument okay top management commitment is one of critical success factors of total quality management I hypothesize I propose that the top management commitment affects six sigma look total quality, total quality management okay I'm oh, sorry top management affect success of Tukur so, this is fact this is Ahmed Saeed Muhammad Saeed Ibrahim Saeed John Saeed there are different papers say that I give you example okay the same time success total quality total quality management is a kind of quality system there are different people define total quality management as a quality system Six Sigma is a quality system and there are many people say Six Sigma is a quality system okay so likewise I think I propose that top management affects Six Sigma so this is my proposition Look, this is the argument. First, so top management affects success of total quality management. Many people say that. It's fact, kind of fact. It's ridiculous to test it again because yeah, many people say that. Total quality management is a quality, success, a quality system, which is very well known. Many people say that before. Give me a reference, please. Six Sigma is a quality system. Oh, many people say that. That's fine. It's very important. So why not? So why don't let's try to imitate total quality management, total top management, okay, as a, a critical factor in six sigma. Why not? Let's test it. So this is how we deduce or how we develop our proposition. So you need to think about it. As I told you before, there is a book that you can buy from Amazon, and there is another book. It's free for uh, editor of MIS Quarterly, I think, one of the top journals in my management information system. He published a book for free in, in, in this kind of research, and you can download it from the group on Facebook. Okay? This is how we can conduct, how can we develop theoretical framework from literature review. Don't be ridiculous. Don't think in stupid way. Please. Please, we need you to innovate in your research. We need to find a new kind of proposition or hypothesis which are derived from thinkers, not imitators. Thank you very much. Next time, I'll talk about how to write critically the principles of critical writing. Thank you. Jazakum Allah khairan.